away from the number two team in the country? We were so close. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been um, one hell of a comeback. That would have been the best comeback that I'd ever been associated with as a, as a coach. So um, that there's a part of us that's, that's uh, a little gutted, a little disappointed that we couldn't pull it off. Um, and as I just said to the guys, 2-0 uh, down after what, about 11 minutes, not a single one of us wouldn't have accepted 3-3 as a final score. So, yeah, it's it's a mix of emotions there. And, and I think that the, the one that's, that, that wins is, is Bright. Um, the, that the nature of our season up to this point, it hasn't been great at times um, as far as results, right? So you get to a situation where we were excited about tonight. We really did feel like we could compete with them. And the guys had a choice. After 11 minutes, you'd seen you're down. We have a choice. It could be a really long night or you can fight and you can try and do something about it. And, and from that perspective, for the guys not to, to throw it in and to, to, to come with the energy they did and, and, and make it interesting, obviously, to, to, get, to, to get one and then come out um, and put ourselves in the lead. It was was remarkable, and, and, and obviously at that point, yeah, it could have been a really, really special night for us in the manner that we could have pulled it off. Um, I've just said to them, I think it's two great teams. The difference is they have a record to, to, to prove that they're a great team, and we don't just yet. So um, we take belief from it. We take encouragement that, as we felt all season, we can play with anyone in the country. Um, what we can't do now is, is, is take the last three games lightly. We have to win out and, and we have to make it as interesting as we possibly can for uh, either the AQ in the, in the tournament run or, or the at-large because I still don't, don't think it's out of the equation just yet. Coffee. Dion basically started the season as a center back. And now you've got more of a forward position. Paid off tonight. What have you seen out of him that makes him such a versatile player? I mean, he's such a threat in the air. Um, in fairness, I have to credit to Kentucky. They, they they were fantastic in the aerial duels with him in the times that we had to be a bit more direct or, or had to, you know, they stopped us from playing out and we and we try and target Dion and they dealt with him really, really well. Um, but then again, it's his ball striking, it's, it's, it's his threat. If he can get on the end of crosses, obviously set pieces is a big, big piece. Um, and again, I think he's kind of reinvented reinvented him a little bit. He, he's embraced this. This has been he's been the player that's had the biggest change, um, and he's embraced it. He, he's he's come with a really open mind and a lot of positivity, and he, he seems to be enjoying it. So, um, anytime you have a player that feels good about what it is they're doing and what they get to do, then, then you have a good chance. So, um, yeah, it's been nice to see that there's been some productivity from him as a result of the change in position. Coach, uh, after uh, two wins and probably a pretty good tie and winning the whole conference play, does it feel like you're within another season, within a season? Does that make sense? Like, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, yeah, you, you, you can almost argue that since we we changed some things going into ODU, we've we've done pretty well, right? Two wins and a tie against the the number two team in the country. Um, as I said, the. the the, the baggage that we carried into that part of the season, unfortunately, um, has left us a lot of work to do. But again, they showed a 2 0 down tonight that we're, we're not done. We're not done fighting, we're not done working for it, we're not done um, trying to place ourselves back where we feel as though we belong. We, we've lost out in some really marginal games and, and uh, had some challenging moments in, in terms of productivity in the final third through 10 games. And, and now we've scored 10 in three goal, in three games. We scored three against the number two team in the country. Um, so there's some, some productivity on that side. Um, and, and yes, as you said, we need to, we need to be superb. And we talked about it, you know, September is September, October needs to be perfect. Um, and, and, and so far undefeated and, and, and not too far away. So we need a long way to continue. I know you may uh, take things game by game, but over the last, over the next few games, you feel like there's a bar in terms of results in order to get into the tournament, like you have that in mind? Or? Yeah, three wins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, it, we, we talked about game by game, but um, Look, you're at a point now where you can't help but look a little bit towards the finish line and, and, and we know what we need to do. We, we need to win the next three games. We need to be as, as high as possible in going into the conference tournament. Um, we need to give ourselves the best seed possible from, from that perspective. It sounds like Marshall lost tonight, so I, you never know, right? There's still some games to be played where other teams have got to take care of. Um, but as far as our RPI and, and that aspect of things, as I said, if we can get three wins, get a quarterfinal win, it, it, it will be close. It will be really, really close. It'll be interesting to see what today has done for us. But, but given that we're not even 500, I was I was pleasantly surprised to see that we're still in the top 60 in the RPI. Um, so yeah, we're not we're not 
Uh, it's not unattainable. It's not unattainable. I was wrong to say what I did at Tatagar for South Carolina because I thought it would be. Um, but uh, yeah, that just is a reflection of the strength of our schedule, which is a top 10 schedule, and then the strength of the conference and every, everyone else that we're playing continues to win, so it continues to look, look good on us. Do you think the team needed a, dis a decision other than a loss against the top team to have some confidence? I know you think that your team has played well in, in most of those uh, ranked matchups, but do you think the team kind of needed to see a more positive result here tonight? Um, yeah, look, they're disappointed. Um, but uh, again, context is everything, right? We're, we're two down after 11 minutes. Right. So, uh, as I said, um, yeah, we, they, I'm sure they felt way more disappointed at that moment than they did at the final whistle. Mm. Uh, and, I, and again, it's the, it's the manner in which we've obviously got ourselves into a position to take the lead um, and then unfortunately uh, concede so quickly after, after that moment. So some things we can learn from it, some things, some things we can continue to improve. And that's part of the challenge of some of the changes we've made. Obviously, the gentleman referred to kind of feeling like it's the start of a new season. Well, we've only played in this system for three games. So there's going to be some things that we're, that we're not quite as well versed in um, as a result of it being so new to us. And, and, and that shone through a little bit. We knew tonight would be a true, true test of this new system, this new formation and, and, and some of the things that we're doing differently because they're so good. But we could have continued doing what we were doing before and it still would have been pretty hard. Um, look, Kentucky has a fantastic team. Um, they'll probably go deep in the tournament, I would anticipate. Uh, and again, we've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. So, um, listen, we would have loved to win and it would have been huge for the guys. But they're all out here right now and in, in, interacting with the fans and the young kids that have come, which is fantastic to see. Uh, and they need to shake this one off. And, and as I said, I think they should be proud of the fact that there was a pivotal choice to be made at 11 minutes in, 2-0 down. Uh, and they made the right choice. And, and, and for that, I'm so proud of them. Was there any certain players that kind of led that charge back into the Yeah, I mean, obviously you have to say when Adam steps up and scores, um, he's a fifth year senior, someone I've worked with a, a long, long time. Um, when we'd gone through other trials and tribulations through the season, he was one that spoke up and you know, this is his last go, this is his last chance. He wants to leave on a high, he wants to leave with something special. Um, he wants to, to, to make even more incredible memories. So um, you have to say, you know, some of the, some of the accolades going to, to Marcus or Yotaro or Dean a little bit, Adam Virtual has gone from not starting a game to, to coming into this group and, uh, and what's it now, I think it's two goals and three assists in the last three games since we've changed the system. And he knows, and I don't mind saying, that he's got Luke McCormick and, and Ryan Crooks who um, were ahead of him at the start of the season and um, are coming back into fitness. And, and again, I, I can't drop him because he keeps scoring and he keeps doing fantastically well. And, 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 and that's a, a massive compliment to Adam and, and how he's dealt with those adversities earlier in the season and, and how he's making the most of his opportunity right now. Did Coach, you, did you have a set play ready um, for that final corner and trying to get that no, last I'll be, goal? I'll be honest, mm -hmm. all we wanted to do was to make sure it was the final sequence of the game, right? That like, we'd obviously scored off, off, off one, so there's always a vulnerability and we just wanted to make sure that was the last thing. And we have to be honest, the last seven, eight minutes, Kentucky were the team territorially closer to our goal than we were to theirs. So to get the set piece, it was okay. Let's put all our eggs in this basket. Um, to say we had a, a, a run set play, I, I, I have to <laughs> I have to say no because Aaron went running over, and I'm not quite sure um, how he how he found himself over there. I don't know whether he was thinking we were playing for the draw or or, or what. But um, again, it just shows you that, that there's, there's high emotions and and uh, pressure in those moments, and um, mistakes can happen. But it's an incredible save as well. We're also um, you know, probably six inches away from winning the game 4-3 at that stage as well. And, and, and that, again, would have just made for just an incredible night. And, and it was still an incredible game with uh, with a lot of high value for, for our, our customers and our, and our fans. So um, I'm sure they enjoyed themselves and, I, and we're going to need them to come out uh, when we're at home at Georgia State uh, in about a week's time. Coach, uh, Luke, it seemed like Luke didn't miss a step after missing some time. Where did you see from him today and his performance out there? Yeah, Luke's, Luke in these first five, ten yards is, is so agile, so explosive in those moments that um, when you have him on the pitch, there's those those moments where the ball drops and, and you're not quite sure which team has possession and, and those transition moments. And, and he can come out of those situations on the wrong side of defenders so much more than, than honestly any other player that we have. Um, and in this system, we feel like we need that quality. Um, and we need that component of what he can what he can do. We'll, we'll have to see and assess how he got through tonight, uh, and because he is still mass, um, you know, managing an injury. Um, but yeah, if, if possible, we'd, we'd like to continue to get more of that from him uh, the rest of the way. All right, thanks everyone. Thanks, Coach.